Okay, so good good day. So today we will be going to discuss about design of steam generators or also known as boilers. Okay, so first we need to discuss or to define what is a steam generator. Steam generator is a closed vessel intended for use in a heating water in heating water or to generate steam or vapor okay so uh, it is composed of a boiler and a furnace so technically a steam generator is a combination of a boiler and a furnace but normally we refer to this as the commonly known as boilers, no? So we do not repair it with furnace, no? Boiler and furnace. But supposedly, technically, it should be boiler and furnace to become a steam generator. So furnace is the place where in fuel is fed uh, to produce heat, no? Or fire. So that it will be transferred to the boiler, then it will produce steam. So the boiler is usually made of two drums. So basically there's two drums. Uh, if you have seen a drum, it looks like that. So heat transfer. Two drums for heat transfer and combustion heat to feed water. So it will supply heat to feed water, no? And the furnace is constructed for combustion, no? Again, it's where the combustion occurs for combustion of fuel no okay so there are two pri two primary classifications of boilers two primary classifications classifications first is the water tube boiler so from the name itself uh, the water is inside the tube no or this is technically known as tubulus okay so for water tube boiler the water is uh, inside the tube while the heated gases are outside meaning since there are many tubes inside the boiler and it is uh, if there is only a little water content inside those tubes and of course there are uh, they will be spread out such that heat will be transferred uh, efficiently to those small tubes inside the drums of the boiler then it will produce much more uh, steam compared to the other one which is the fire tube so the fire tube boiler uh, or tubular uh, from the word itself fire tube so the fire is inside the tubes no instead of water and it is surrounded where uh, the fire supply to the tubes and water is surrounding those smaller tubes inside the drum no therefore this is for smaller applications so to define it properly 
Switch. Is in reverse, no? Okay, or water or feed water. Okay, so we go to the formulas of boilers so uh, this actually is used to define the performance of boilers okay so if we will draw a boiler here again this is looks like there is a uh, two drums this is the boiler part Okay, so this is where the steam exits. So the steam exits with a symbol MS and has a unit of uh, kilogram per second or more commonly referred to in kilo kilograms per hour because the number will be too huge if we will use the kilograms per second. So in the boiler, we'll, we will feed in what is known to be as the feed water. So the feed water are the is the water in which it will be subjected to heating such that it will boil no so of course this uh, smaller uh, lower drum is the furnace this is where combustion of course which supplies heat in to our pit water no so here inside the furnace of course to produce the flames or heat we need fuel so the fuel has a symbol of mf so this is, in MS is particularly kilogram steam, kilogram steam per second or kilogram steam per hour. Where in the fuel, referred to in uh, kilogram fuel per second or kilogram fuel per hour. So normally, we use this kilogram unit uh, of, of, of a steam or fuel in respect to hours, no, because... Uh, we will you if we will use seconds it will be a very large number so of course if the fuel has mass the fuel has an intrinsic uh, property which is its heating value it's it is the amount of energy released when you are combusting the fuel no? so this is known as the heating value so the heating value is been uh, a product tabulated through a product of experimentation which uh, measured the amount of heat released per kilogram of that fuel burn no so of course combustion will not occur without the presence of air okay so this is a typical construction of boiler so it's from water with water then it will produce steam okay so like that so we will now proceed to the formulas of boilers so, uh, it, is, it would be very helpful, in, aside from familiarizing the formulas, is that you will memorize the formula, formulas because in the board exam, you are, not, you are not allowed to bring a table of formulas where you could refer to, no? So, it is much more advice that aside from uh, familiarizing, you need to memorize this because when we are also uh, taking the board, we much more memorize everything, no? So... So the mass of steam again is the rate of evaporation. Evaporation, sorry. So the rate of evaporation or the mass flow in engineering, it is easier to understand that it is the mass flow of steam. 
team in kilograms per hour. So we will use kilograms per hour mostly in our examples because again for the reason of practical practicality no practicality so number two so we have the heating surface which is the total surface area okay take note through through which heated water heated water and hot gases so typically exchange heat typically the heating surface area is the surface area that is subjected to heating of the furnace such that it will transfer the heat to the feed water no so the heating surface area has formulas so uh in order for you to uh, memorize the formula much much easier so i will i will write first the formula so if you will memorize this it will be very and without knowing what it is it will be very difficult but if you will uh, remember the concept of how this formula is derived it will be easier to remember so if this is your uh, uh, if we will uh, put the boiler in a lateral position so that around there is a whiteboard. So if this is the drum, the drum has the drum has a length of L, of course, and has a diameter of D. Now, area one is the lateral surface area or the shell area. So here, what is covered here is the area one, which will shade this in red. That is the area one, no? Again, that is area one. Okay? So, of course, the formula in geometry for area one is simply pi LD, no? It's, it's just uh, just basic, no? So, here, uh, we have area two. Area two, inside this boiler are small tubes. Small tubes, many small tubes, no? Multiple smaller tubes. So this smaller tube both has an internal diameter and an external diameter D small o. Okay. So area 2 is, is the area of the area uh, inside, no? Lateral area lateral area meaning it is the lateral area inside the tube so it considers uh, pi d i l times the number of tubes you will multiply this e2 into the number of tubes of course because it will be it will be multiplied so here uh, the the a3 is rep is the area in of the drum which is shaded in blue so th this one here is referred to as area three okay that is area three so this is area one this is area two inside the shell inside the shell okay area two so again this is an distance l okay plus times the number of tubes n is the number of tubes times the and and the a3 is the cross section area of the sh of the drum of the boiler while the a4 a4 is the cross section area if you will look at this at cross section so if you will project this at cross section so this is the cross section so I project na to I project na so this is now area 4 so if you will memorize this four areas involved a1 a2 a3 and a4 it will be easier for you to remember the formula of the heating surface okay so we have formula number three so formula number three is heat heat generated by fuel okay generated by fuel okay 
So the heat generated by fuel with a symbol QS is equal to MF times QH. So again, the 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 amount of energy released per kilogram of that fuel is known to be as the heating value. So if you multiply na nimo sa mass sa fuel na gipi, that will give you an energy of heat. Okay. So uh, this mass of fuel, of course, as a unit of again, this is uh, commonly, not always, but commonly lang siya in kilograms per hour. Then the then the heating value is kilojoules per kilogram fuel, no? Fuel. Okay, it will cancel out the kilogram fuel. It will give you kilojoules per hour. So normally the unit for uh, generated, the heat generated by fuel, uh, QS as a unit of kilojoules per hour. No, with this formula, MFQH. Number four, we now proceed to rated boiler horsepower. So the rated boiler horsepower, or sometimes referred to as RBH. So this RBH has two formulas depending upon the type of the boiler, no? So, your rated boiler horsepower is equal to the heating surface of your 0 0.91. This is for water tube. Tubulous, no? And this is uh, the formula for fire tube. Okay. So, your rated boiler horsepower uh, is dependent upon the type of boiler that is uh, used. Okay, so then formula number five. Okay, so formula number five is developed boiler horsepower. Okay, so developed bo boiler horsepower is equal to mass of steam times the enthalpy of steam, it doesn't necessarily be a saturated steam, but it could be a superheated steam as long as it's the enthalpy of steam at the exit of the boiler, no? what, which is technically a, will be the entrance, at the, uh, will be for the entrance of the turbine. Minus HF, which is the uh, saturated liquid enthalpy of the feed water, HF over 3.5 Toto, no? Remember this, memorize this. So, if we will conduct a unit analysis on this unit, so again, if this is uh, kilograms, kilogram per C, uh, per R, sorry, that is kilogram per R, this is kilojoules per kilogram. So, this unit, by the way, is uh, kilojoules per R horsepower. So, uh, one boiler horsepower, BHP, sorry, BHP, boiler horsepower. So it will do cancellation of units, cancel on kilogram, cancel on kilojoules. So what, uh, cancel on R. So uh, what remains is now the boiler horsepower unit, which is, what is this, no? So therefore, uh, note, one boiler horsepower is equal to three five three two two kilojoules per hour. Okay, so uh, R is yeah. That is formula number five. No, so formula number six is percent rating. So the percent rating of boiler is equal to the developed boiler horsepower boiler horsepower divided by the rated boiler horsepower which is the rbh no computed using the heating surface area so again they they will have the same unit of horsepower so technically they will cancel up creating only a constant no Percent rating. Okay. A seven, we have the ASME evaporation units. Okay.
Okay. So the ASME evaporation units is simply equal to the mass of steam times uh, HS enthalpy of steam ty, uh, minus the enthalpy of the feed water saturated liquid. So again, this will uh, give us a unit of because this is kilograms per hour and this is kilojoules per kilogram. So this will give us a unit of kilojoules per hour. Okay. So uh, number eight is the factor of evaporation. So the factor of evaporation, which is a symbol of Fe, is simply equal to Hs minus Hf over 2257. So if you, if this looks familiar, it's because 2257, so is the uh, latent heat of vaporization. It is where, it is the amount of enthalpy that is uh, energy that is required for liquid to to, to trans to, to to be transformed into vapor, no? So, if you will uh, use the unit analysis, the unit of this is, again, in kilojoules per kilogram. And, of course, the unit of this, because this is an, a latent heat, so this is kilojoules per kilogram. So, technically, a factor of evaporation is simply a constant, no? Unitless. Because, again, that is simply a factor, no? So, we have formula number nine. So, formula number nine is the boiler thermal efficiency. Okay, so the 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 boiler thermal efficiency is equal to is equal to M S times H S minus H F divided by M F times Q H. So. Basically, this is the formula for boiler thermal efficiency. But sometimes we have parasitic losses due to uh, attachment or use of uh, auxiliary machines, which become a parasitic loss. So now we will have the net boiler efficiency. So boiler thermal efficiency is sometimes referred to as boiler efficiency. So don't you worry about that. So, since this is net, so we will consider MS times HS minus HF minus the summation of energy of accessories, no? Energy used by accessories. Okay. Divided by, again, mass of fuel times the heating value of fuel per kilogram. So, we have formula number 10. We have the actual specific evaporation. Actual specific evaporation. Okay. So the actual eva specific evaporation is sometimes known to be as boiler economy. Why does it say so? Because it is simply the ratio Evaporation. It is simply the ratio of the mass flow of steam over mass flow of fuel. So therefore, it measures how many kilograms of steam is produced per kilogram of fuel fed into the, to the furnace. No? So this unit will become kilogram of steam per kilogram. Uh, don't you worry about the per hour. Okay, cancel room na siya. Kilogram fuel per hour. So this will cancel out. This will give us kilogram steam per kilogram fuel okay so this is for actual specific ev evaporation now formula number 11 we have equivalent evaporation okay so equivalent evaporation as a formula equal to mass of steam times the factor of evaporation. evaporation. Remember that the factor of evaporation is unitless. Therefore, whatever is the unit of the mass of steam 
for example, in kilogram per hour, so that will also be the unit of power equivalent evaporation. So, basically, it's in kilograms per hour. Okay? So, remember that this factor of evaporation is only uh, dependent uh, using the latent heat of water at 100 degrees Celsius. Because that is the temperature when water transforms from liquid to vapor. We have formula number 12. We have now equivalent is specific, take note of terms, evaporation. So, uh, it uses uh, the uh, specific actual specific evaporation no? which is ms over mf times factor of eva eva evaporation okay so of course since this is a uh, this is factor is unitless no so therefore this is in unit of kilogram steam per kilogram fuel okay formula number 13 uh, we have boiler and furnace efficiency. So before we have boiler efficiency. Now this is boiler and furnace efficiency. So the boiler and furnace efficiency is simply uh, has a symbol of EBF. Okay, so EBF. So E B F is equal to M S times H S minus H F over M F Q H minus mass of ash times Q of ash. Okay, so this is the formula for uh, boiler and furnace efficiency. The only thing that added is added here is the mass of ash and the the cube ash so we have number 14 which, which is the great efficiency so here in great efficiency it now considers the carbon salts no or deposits in the uh, during the combustion process so this is one minus mass of carbon so again that is mass of carbon times Q of carbon, the heat content of the carbon, no? divided by uh, heat of carbon, carbon per kilogram, okay, so kilogram carbon, of course, so over QH, so these are the 14 formulas that you need to memorize, more than familiarize, uh, in respect to the design of steam generators or boilers. Now we will have some poor problems. Okay, so this is sample problem one. I will write it down.
Okay, so a steam boiler on a test generates 885,000 pound of steam in 4 hours, no period. The average steam pressure is 400 psia, no. So the average steam temperature is 700 degrees Fahrenheit. The average temperature of uh, feed water supply to the boiler is 280 degrees Fahrenheit. This is at saturated liquid condition. No? If the boiler efficiency for the period is 82.5%, meaning we're given with the boiler efficiency, and if the coal has a heating value, QH, of 13,850 BTU per pound as fired, find the average amount of coal burned in short times per hour. So as you remember, uh, there are in tonnage there is two types no in english there is a short ton and there is a long ton when we are referring to the short ton is the normal we understood how uh, we remember it is 2000 pounds no one ton is 2000 pounds while a long ton is 2240 pounds so but we are only asked if in in short tons per hour so we will write the given so of course since we have the condition of the steam at uh, 400 psia and a temperature of 700 degrees fahrenheit we use it uh, we we find the uh, enthalpy of the steam at this condition at the english english steam table we found that the enthalpy hs is equal to 1362.9 btu per pound so that is the enthalpy that is for HS, so the enthalpy of steam. Well, the enthalpy of feed water, which is HF at 280, is equal to 579.676 kilojoules per kilogram. So we convert this to BTU per pound, so times 1 British thermal unit is equal to 1.055 kilojoules times uh, in every one kilogram we have 2.22 pounds okay cancel units okay so what remains is simply a btu per pound so the h if therefore is equal to 247.5 btu per pound okay so uh, we have then that our mass of steam is given to be 885,000 pounds in 4 hours, no? 4 hours period, which will result to 221,250 pounds per hour. Okay? So we also are given with the heating value of the fuel, which is the coal, which is 13,850 BTU per pound. Okay? Solution. So... Again, if you remember, boiler efficiency boiler efficiency is simply equal to boiler thermal efficiency, which has a formula of MS times HS minus HF over MF times QH. Okay, so uh, we are given with this values with a check mark. So what we are uh, required is simply the uh, mf at uh, short tons per hour okay we substitute ms or oh, given ang ms given two to one 250 pounds per hour times the enthalpy of steam which is 1362.9 247.5 so this is BTU per pound of course that will cancel down the pound the pounds no? so over MF times the heating value of 13,850 BTU per pound okay so uh, cancel the, the the BTU okay so what remains is the unit of pounds per hour, so which is MF, no, mass flow rate of fuel, which is uh, equivalent to 21,597.8 pounds per hour, okay? 
Okay, since, since we need this to be in short ton, so 2,000 pounds is one short ton. Okay, so cancel the pounds. Okay, so this gives us 10.799 short tons per hour. So this is the final answer. Okay, that is for problem one. So we have problem two. We'll write down problem two. Okay, so problem number two. So at 23.5 kilogram per second steam no, at 5 MPa and 400 degrees Celsius. So 5 MPa has a saturated temperature of 260 something. So therefore 400 degrees Celsius is eh, judging from it, the condition of the steam is superheated. It's produced by the steam generator. No? So the feed water enters the economizer which is another term for a preheater at 145 degrees celsius and leaves at 205 so meaning the original temperature of the feed water heater is 145 degrees celsius but due to preheating it uh, becomes 205 degrees celsius the steam leaves the boiler drum with a quality of so it is 98 percent steam so therefore now by 2 percent moisture the unit consumes 2.75 kilograms of coal per second as received having heating value so not a heating value of the coal which is 25,105 kilojoules per kilogram what would be the overall efficiency of the unit in percent so the overall unit uh, of efficiency of the unit in percent is also another term for, for boiler efficiency so uh, we write first the given the gibbons okay so the gibbons are at 5 mpa so at 5 MPa and 400 degrees Celsius, table 3 of your steam table, the enthalpy of the steam is 3195.7 kilojoules per kilogram. So at 145 degrees Celsius, so we use the original temperature of water which is uh, 145, no? HF is 
610.63 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so uh, we also given with the mass of fuel to be 2.75 kilogram per second. No? So uh, mass of steam given also 23.5 kilogram per second. Okay, and we also have the heating value of the uh, fuel, which is 25,102 kilojoules per kilogram fuel. Okay, so solution uh, required, eh? required we are to, are to find the boiler efficiency, boiler efficiency in percent. So solution. We have boiler efficiency is equal to again MS, which the numerator part is actually the ASME evaporation units. If you will look at this, no? MS uh, HS minus HF over MF. Okay, so remember everything is given here, so we just plug in everything. No? Plug in. So we have 23.5 kilogram per second times 3195.7 uh, minus 610.63. Uh, this is kilojoules per kilogram, so cancel kilogram. Then we have 2.75 kilogram fuel per second times 25,102 kilojoules per kilogram fuel cancel kilogram fuel cancel kilojoules uh, okay so what remains is uh, cancel ang second so unitless no? so in percent this is zero uh, in in decimal this is 0 0.88 or in percent this is 88.88% uh, is the boiler efficiency now, if you will, if we will be going to examine boiler efficiency formula, so if you will examine boiler efficiency formula, MS times HS minus HF over MF times QH. Okay, if you will examine this, this uh, uh so this uh numerator part is actually the ASME evaporation units if you will uh, visit your ASME evaporation units evap units okay over MF QH this is another formula for deriving the uh, boiler efficiency or uh, this ratio here is also uh, what is in the actual specific evaporation? Okay, so take note of that. that this uh, ratio here, if, we, if instead given of a mass of steam and mass of fuel, and you are given with the actual specific evaporation, then we just plug in it in here, we replace that to find the boiler efficiency no okay so uh, we proceed with another topic which is cogeneration cogeneration is just a conceptual topic it's a very simple topic it doesn't really need to be rigorous so uh, all the the power cycle that is discussed previously intends to produce work no of course the work done by the turbine now, uh, during the process, there are a lot of waste, which is the heat rejected, which results as a byproduct of that uh, process of producing heat. No? So, so cogeneration is instead of wasting the heat the, to be rejected into the condenser, we will utilize uh, we will utilize another purpose for that. Uh, rejected heat and it will be known as process heat so okay 
So rejected heat will be utilized and now will be known as the process heat. So, so, uh, there is a formula known as cogeneration efficiency or what is known as the utilization factor. Okay. Symbol epsilon u. Okay. So this utilization factor as a formula of work net plus process heat over Q in. Okay. So what does this depict? No? So instead of uh, this is supposedly QR, no? So but QR is equal to Q process heat. This will become so now this is the formula of cogeneration efficiency. Cogeneration is that aside from generating power, we are cogenerating heat for other industrial purposes such as drying or such as uh, uh, oh, mga inana, drying. No? So basically, instead it will be termed as rejected heat, it will now be known as process heat. Since uh, our formula for uh, efficiency is output over input now since we have utilized the uh, rejected heat as process heat now it becomes part of the output so therefore there is a formula now that is known to be as cogeneration efficiency which is the output which is the work net the output of the cycle this is for the output of the cycle no work net plus qr over q in but for the engine it is simply Work turbine plus QR over Q, and I believe that you already know the difference because I've taught you that. Okay, so uh, since uh, if this is a cycle, then it should be work net plus QR over Q in. Since again, that we no longer refer to as QR because this is no longer a rejected heat but a process heat, no? Utilized for some other uh, purpose. So now it becomes work net plus process heat over. Q in so remember if you will look at this if this uh if if qp will not be utilized remember uh, if qp will not be utilized it now becomes a cycle thermal efficiency did you see the difference okay so if if you will not utilize the qr or the process heat the formula will become a cycle thermal efficiency. But if you will utilize the rejected heat into process heat, the formula will become a utilization factor or cogeneration efficiency. Simply a simple concept no? that you should understand. Okay, so that is our the end of our discussion for design of steam generates generators and cogeneration generation